if we think about everything that we've covered in this course, we've talked about file I.O., we've talked about control structures, we've talked about different data types. In a nutshell, we have talked about how to program. We, we know how. There's not really much else to it aside from actually applying our ability. And that's actually sort of where we're going with the remainder of this course is in this idea of taking sort of what we've learned and applying it. And there's a big fancy $5 word nowadays that gets thrown around here, something known as data science. Data science. But realistically, all they're attempting to do is stati oh goodness statistics with code realistically that's all we're looking to do we have our ability to do code which is a very quick way to do heavy mathematical calculations well guess what statistics is a way to do I wouldn't call them heavy but mathematical calculations and so realistically we're just saying can I then use my code to do all of these applied mathematics and in fact yes we can and this is actually where some of Python's sort of popularity and notoriety 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 uh, comes from and the idea is that there are these different libraries that said you've got a lot of different mathematical calculations going on there awesome fantastic here you go here's how to do them in a nutshell so they handle it uh, quite well now when we're working off of say for example numpy just it's more of a you know commonality here but uh, for programmers sake we hate typing anything uh, so something like numpy too many letters it's just too many letters so the sort of de facto default uh, way to reference numpy is as np uh, I'm just more this is a way to kind of just throw this out there this is no different than uh, when we do things like import random as r or import math as m we're just trying to shorthand it mp sort of is the the standard that people use so why is numpy so powerful why is it you know oh yeah it does the thing but the way to think about this is if i sort of built out a list right this is a list the big thing is that from Python's perspective, they only treat a collection as a collection of numbers, a list. I can add to the list, I can uh, remove from the list, but I can't really do mathematical calculations, even though it's how we could look at this also as a vector. And maybe we want to, you know, treat it like a vector rather than a collection and in fact that is where numpy comes into play and it says we're going to take sort of your list just to redraw it out here real fast we're gonna take your list and we're gonna convert it into an object known as a numpy array now remember when we think about the idea of objects they're just are these complex data types that have both functions attached to them and special you know properties as well we've seen this with uh working off of csv dict reader literally uh strings that's all they're kind of worked uh or uh, they're dealing with and so if we think about it when we design out an array we start off by presenting it with np.array Again, now we're just saying uh, I want to work off of this particular library, which has a function attached to it that is expecting a list, and this will convert it into that array. Now, yes, we can see that there are a number of different ways, but let's actually see this in action. So 
I happen to have built out a little bit of code here. Again, I have that import numpy as np, and I have a uh, small list of just nine numbers uh, stored in x. Now, this is my typical go-to way of doing it. Instead of having it sort of uh, built out and trying to write it all in one line, I don't like it because it's just too much, uh, and the, the arrays could get really large. Uh, so I like to build that list out first and then np.array x. Now in this case, I'm, you know, x is just my uh, variable and this is going to convert it from a list into a numpy array. And not anything terribly different goes on there. As you can see, it, it still looks like uh, a list. There's no comma, uh, but again, you know, it's treating it like it's a matrix instead of a list of numbers. From a philosophical standpoint, they are different. From a technical standpoint, they are the same. Uh, but you can see that NumPy also allows for some different uh, functionality. Again, if it's treating it like a vector or a matrix, you know, they have a shape associated to them. Ours is just a one-dimensional vector of nine values, but it has a shape associated to it, and it has a size. So far, these aren't anything terribly different or crazy. You know, they're uh, no different than when we were working off of a list. You know, this is uh, Lin in a nutshell, so I haven't done anything outlandish. But where we start to get really crazy, and just to show these off for a second, I can make a, another ar array. Where we start to get really interesting is when we start trying to do you know, array operations. And the idea here is that we're now dealing with element by element operations. So in this case, let's say, for example, uh, I want to take my X and this compare 1D that I've worked off of. Now, you know, again, we have our X array that is one through nine and then compare 1D, which is five to 15. Well, if I did something like uh, plus between them and not just a plus operation well go in element by element and add those respective elements together and I know that there's a little spacing thing here going on that happens uh, for I think it's due to the two uh, two digits and single digits but my point is you know oh well you can see this 9 and this 13 if we were to add them together that would be 22. And the same thing can come into play. We can also do comparison operations. So in this case, we can see that every element is uh, in the X is not larger than every element in its respective location in the compare 1D. Uh, and then the same kind of thing. You can see that we can also do scalar values. So now instead of doing a comparison uh, on another array, I just want to say where where is there a value that is greater than four? And so, yes, one is not, just to have that uh, in place. One is not, two is not, three is not, four is not greater than four, but five is, six is, seven is, eight is, nine is. And just to see that maybe in a different light, compare greater than 10. Same kind of concept going on there. You can see that uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 are not. But 11, 12, 13 are. <clears throat> Where this starts to get really crazy is when we sort of increase from a vector into a matrix. And in this case, you can see, oh, well, I'm, I've created uh, a two-dimensional array uh, that is just ones and zeros. That's mostly just because I randomly picked one or zero. But you can see, oh, well, that shape is now telling me it is a three by three matrix and that size is now telling me oh well there are nine elements in the matrix so you can see that this sort of kind of allows us to get the size of the elements without having to do anything terribly crazy like we would with a list so we're starting to see some connections going on there and I've built another comparison uh, two-dimensional array just to show that off in that case let's see if we wanted to look at each element and say are they equal well, this is where we get into sort of the uh, 
matrix operations versus element wise operations. If we do comparisons, again, if we've done just like any operator we've done in the past, it says go to each respective element and apply this operator. So just because we're in a two dimensional uh, matrix or a 2D matrix, it's not gonna change that. So this one, is it equal to this, or is this value equal to this value? No, so false. You can see that that goes on, but these last, these inner sort of four, zero, one, zero, one, or zero, one, one, zero, those are equal in both, so we get a true. Maybe that's not what we're dealing or looking for. Instead, we are actually looking to say, are these variables or are these two matrices equal? And so NumPy has a way to do that. And that's where, again, uh, because we can't use the uh, equal equal sign like we've done in the past, well, it does something different, unfortunately. NumPy says, oh, well, let me compare. Let me look at two arrays, two matrices, Y and compare to, uh, or compare to D and say, oh, well, let me compare them. And in this case, yes, they are false because yeah, again, we, we saw that. Uh, but if I did something like compare Y to itself, oh, you can see that it's gonna get a, a true value going on there. The reason why this is sort of prevalent is that same kind of approach happens when we're dealing with something like multiplication. Ah, right, you know, matrix multiplication is a little different than go to each element and multiply it by its respective place. That's not the same thing. Well, that's where if I did just do y times compare to d, again, from a, a calcula, from an element-wise operation, go to each element, and multiply it by its respective value. And in our case, that just gives us sort of this 0, 1, 1, 0 as our end product. But that is, again, not matrix multiplication or producing a dot product, or maybe that's not what we're looking for. And very similar to array equal, there is a way to get the dot product of two matrices. And there we go. Oh, look at that. Now we're actually getting the dot product of our matrix to matrix uh, handling. <laughs>